this is my daily driver. I have been using this keyboard for over two months now and I am absolutely in love with it. I even did a few mods to it to make it sort of an endgame keyboard. Let me show you what makes this Ducky 1.3 RGB the endgame worthy keyboard. Looking for affordable Windows or Office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your Windows edition, use my discount code ELITE25 to get a 25% on any Windows or Office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds you will receive your code. In Windows, go to Settings, there should be an Activate Windows prompt at the bottom, click that, enter your code and wait for Windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with a command SLMGR dot vbs slash xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again use code le25 at scdkey.com. So this would be the Ducky 1.3 RGB full size keyboard. It comes in a neat package and actually has a dust cover as well. I'll show you this later. And the board that I got here is black with purple accented keycaps which breaks the overall boringness of an otherwise plain black keyboard. Other than that, you will be getting this sticker inside, it's a ducky sticker, short user's manual, which explains some basic stuff which is actually needed, like how to change RGB lights and such, you know how to use some modifier keys and etc. Other than that, you will be getting a keycap puller as it is hot swappable, braided USB-C to a cable, ducky branded keycap puller, additional set of keycaps, including this ducky novelty rounded keycap. So let's get into details now. First off, it's a full-size keyboard with added 4 keys in the top right corner. So basically this is a 108 keys keyboard. The keycaps are double shot PBT, a little bit textured on top and it comes with a slightly slanted body. It's a two-tone, actually three-tone colored body. You may or may not like this shape, but this is Ducky's signature. I like it as it fits my setup so well. The front is black, the sides are silver and the bottom is completely white. There is a ducky branding in the right corner, this is looking away from you, so it's not something that's in your face, but rather it's there signifying that this is actually a ducky keyboard. It's packed with what they call the quack mechanics, oh boy we will see what they mean by that. On the bottom side we have a few things going on here. First, the USB connector is centered and slightly moved inwards. Again, you may or may not like this approach, but it makes it possible to have your cable running in the middle or on each side through these cable raceway channels. So the cable will exit on the side. There are four larger rubber pads on each corner, but not a middle one. Technically, we do not need it as this keyboard does not flex or warps in the middle at all. But we get a nice set of angled feet, which are double feet actually, so you have two possible angles to choose from. Apart from that, both options also have an anti-slip rubber on them. There are also four dip switches on the back, these are used to set some options on the keyboard because it does not come with any software. So the dip switch one is used to enable Windows lock key support, dip 2 in off position is the N key rollover, meaning the keyboard will register all the keys pressed at once, so if you bang on the keyboard it's all gonna be registered. In on mode it will be only for the 6 key rollover support, so 6 keys registered max. Dip 3 in off position is the keyboard is registered as ducky keyboard, the on makes it user defined vendor ID so you know you can name this keyboard anything you like and it will be registered as that in Windows or any other OS. Dip 4 in off position makes the right window key that and in on position it changed to the menu key, I prefer it to be the menu key like a right click. But I know this itches you, what the heck is the quack mechanics, does it quack? Well, this has to do for everything inside the keyboard. First, the keyboard is hot swappable. This makes it super easy to mod and swap keys to anything you like. Mine came with Cherry MX Blues because at the time I could not choose any other switch option. But yep, yeah, you can when buying. So all Cherry MX variants are available and no other switches. This can be a good and bad thing at the same time. I did mod mine, I will explain how and what. Let's talk more about the quackiness here. The Ducky decided to use scale hot swap sockets, these are pretty durable and pretty easy to pull and insert switches too. 
The PCB supports either 3 or 5 pin switches. The switches are north facing, so bear this in mind as this can be a problem with some aftermarket keycaps. But that is not all, you see these yellow things here, the whole PCB has a nice 3.5mm thick silicone gasket placed between a steel switch plate and the PCB. Not only that, the case inside is also padded with a foam to prevent any hollow sounds when typing. So you're already halfway there with the mods out of the box, that's quack mechanics in a nutshell for you. Stabilizers are also tuned, these are the Ducky Owns V2 pre-lubed stabilizers, quite good actually, but they are not lubed enough and some of them are inconsistently lubed, of course we will fix this. The thing is they are good, already clipped, cherry style, plate mounted stands. Alright, before I show you the RGB modes and some unique features, take a listen to the stock unmodded keyboard, bear in mind that I got blue switches here, they are notoriously loud. So you can hear that the sound is pretty much ok for a clicky switch, the only thing that you can actually hear is the dreadful pinging noise and this does not come at all from the keyboard itself, this is specifically narrowed down to a switch spring. I don't know if you can hear how it pings but it does, not as some switches do but the noise is there and if and when you start typing louder and faster the noise intensifies. But I was not lazy so I took all the switches apart and bag looped all the springs with Crytox 205 grade 0. This took the ping noise completely away from this keyboard and I actually enjoyed blue switches for a day maximum. 45 grams force needed to actuate a key press, super nice to type on, they do not feel scratchy as some cherry switches do, 50 million keystrokes, life expectancy and all that jazz, but the thing remains they are loud, so I decided to add my Aco Jelly black loop switches and while I am at it I decided to do a holly mod to the stabilizers, also a band-aid mod to the PCB to soften that heat especially with the space bar. So again this is a test with Aco Jelly black switches before the stabilizer mods. And this would be after I believe that spacebar and actually all the keys which have stabilizers sound so much better.
The keyboard has a more talky sound with these switches. I did try Gator and Browns, they sound even better in my opinion. It has to do with the switch housing as it determines the overall sound. But I am so done with tactile switches, I got so used to linears that I can't go back now. Anyhow, mods do help, especially the Holy mod for the stabilizers, the rest of the mods, Quack Mechanics did all the job. So for a keyboard that comes stock like this, epic job and stock sound. All the mods and stuff it has built in makes this keyboard 1.25 kg, so it's a nice weight, does not slip around the table and will stay in one spot when you type. Personally, I like it this way. Also, if you are fine with stock PBTD caps, they are actually super good. RGB will shine through them nicely and they are better than the most PBT keycaps on the market. I mean stock keycaps. I did have my reasons for switching to another set of keycaps. Personally, I like the lower keycap size of the Cherry size keycaps because this keyboard comes with a standard OEM size, they are slightly taller than Cherry standard size. Personal preference, again, also aesthetical. Anyhow, with stock keycaps, RGB will shine in its full glory, it is not super bright, so it won't be in the way at night, it's super easy to set a preferred color for example. Function plus space will give you all the colors on the keyboard, just press a key with the color you like and all the keys will shine in that color. Of course, it comes with some effects built in, use function plus F10 and this will let you cycle through all the modes it has. Of course, it can be turned off, function plus F5 or F6 or F7 will make that color light more. So for example, function plus F5 will bring more blue in the mix and so on. This is useful if you want to make a certain specific color, but function plus space makes life so much easier, just my two cents. There is also a mouse control function, press the function plus right alt plus num lock, this enables mouse control directly from the keyboard. The control is done on a numpad arrows and zero is left click while delete or the point key is the right click. This is a neat if you don't have a mouse or need to do something rather quickly. When you are in this mode, the M will shine on the indicator lights, which are nicely hidden in the top right between the four added keys and the numpad keys. While we are on the four added keys, these are the calculator, mute and volume up and down. I love this feature, I mean these keys, I use calculator a lot, but also volume keys. Maybe for the volume a nice dial would have been a better choice. It does not use any software, but it does have specific functions which you will need to look up in the manual and learn them. So having no software is once again a good thing and on the other hand a bad thing, because there is no way you can remember all of these every time, so the manual will help you. It also supports macro recording function plus control for 3 seconds to enter macro recording mode, then select the key you want to program, type in whatever you want your macro to be and press function control to exit macro mode. There are a lot more functions, so I will leave a link to the manual in the description but also some of the features here in the video so you can see them on the screen. You can pause the video and check when and if needed. So this brings us to the conclusion of this video. Is this keyboard good for the price of $159 for the full size keyboard? Well, I honestly think that it is especially if you take into account all the mods it already has applied to it. Great set of PBT keycaps, very good switch options for a stock keyboard. There are also several colors option to choose from. For example, this Daybreak version is super awesome. It's combination of blue and yellow. I had no issues using it as a daily driver and I will continue to do so. So no input lag that I noticed. I do have some remarks though. White switch plate gets easily scratched when you pull switches so be careful technically this won't even be visible when you put your keycaps on the keyboard but something to keep in mind. Depending on the switch type you choose expect pinging noise from them. Cherry switches are known to do this so Lubing the switches and doing the holy mod to the stabilizers would be a first thing to do to this keyboard. Other than that, the quack mechanics got everything else nailed and this makes this keyboard the best out of the box endgame keyboard I have reviewed so far. That is all for this time guys, sub to the channel, like and share the video and I'll see you in another one.